Hi, I'm Barbara Wigand with the Caring Arts Foundation. I recently did a class on painting butterflies with some local cancer patients. I was inspired to do this class when one day earlier this summer a beautiful black swallowtail butterfly landed on my herb pots and it left something behind. It was the tiny little pearl of an egg and I'd never seen a butterfly egg before. And then I noticed there were some others and I watched them hatch into caterpillars and grow, build chrysalides and emerge into beautiful butterflies. So I was inspired to do this class. It's very easy and it makes use of just some very simple materials. And I'm gonna show you what those are. I decided to uh, break this into three videos. I actually did the class as uh, doing all three projects together and you can move between them as one part dries, you can work on another. So I really encourage you to look at all three of the videos. But for this first one, it's something I call the Tinkerbell butterfly and it's very easy so you just need to protect your table with something I use a big sheet of scrap paper you're gonna need some somewhat heavyweight paper I like to use this mixed-media paper um, but you can use any kind of uh, cardstock uh, or something with a little body to it um, and then you're gonna need a selection of brushes. You can buy a bag of brushes like this for about five or six dollars at the local craft store um, because you'll need a couple of different sizes. You'll also need uh, some water, a cup of water. Um, you need a number 10 pencil and an eraser. The end of the uh, pencil is fine, but I like these kneaded erasers. Um, and then you're going to need a couple of brushes. For this particular project, I use uh, this flat brush. It's about three-fourths of an inch, I think, and a tiny uh, round brush. Um, but you don't, it doesn't have to be that precise. You'll need some paper towel just to blot your brush. Uh, and then you either need a palette like this, which you, I think you can get these for a dollar at the craft shop. These are nice because you can cover them. They, they usually come with a little plastic cover. So if you don't use all the paints, you can save them. I like to uh, personally use paper plates. They work uh, just as well. Uh, or another option is you can use these little Met cups, which uh, are also nice because you can cover them with tin foil if you have extra paint left. So, um, and you need some water-based paint. Now you can use acrylics, uh, either in a tube or sometimes uh, the craft acrylics come in a little bottle and they're very inexpensive. For this first project, I'm actually gonna use finger paint, but I'm gonna use a brush. I'm not gonna use my fingers. It has an unusual consistency. I'm gonna use it straight out of the bottle with my uh, half inch brush here. Um, and this is going to be a sideways butterfly, so you have to kind of imagine where the body is going to be. And then you just do some big swipes. Um, and you can do this with uh, acrylic paint also, but um, I like the interesting consistency of these finger paints. Um, and they leave those sort of lines that are kind of nice. And I like those. Uh, and then... This is the bottom wing of my butterfly. And the body's gonna be here. So it's a sideways butterfly. This is the upper wing uh, and the lower wing. I'm gonna make it a little more dramatic there. And then, we're just gonna let that dry. If you have a uh, air dryer, that helps to dry things more quickly. Otherwise, you can start on another project while this dries, and we're gonna come back to it. There's some parts of the blue that aren't entirely dry, but I think it's dry enough where we can add some more color to it. So I'm gonna take my uh, red finger paint, which is actually, I think it's gonna come out kind of pink. I'm gonna use that same brush, and uh, I'm actually gonna use it straight out of the bottle again. Uh, and I'm just going to add in some nice pops of color here and there. And I'm using 
both the side of the brush and the flat part of the brush and I'm just letting the color go in there. I like those lines so I'm letting those happen because I think they add some nice movement. Um, and again I'm kind of fanning it out. So I'm letting it go into the blue here and there. Uh, and then I'm going to think I'm going to add a little yellow. I'm going to wash out my brush. Then I'm going to add some yellow. It's the same finger paint, um, which is not something you'd normally really paint with. But I just kind of like to experiment with these things and see what kind of effects I get. Um, this paint is very unusual. It gives you some kind of cool textures. So just adding some color here and there. Let it go into the blue. And I'm going to add some at the bottom too. Got too much paint there. let that dry. Actually while that's drying I think I can uh, add my butterfly body. I uh, put some black acrylic paint. I didn't have black finger paint um, so I just took a little black acrylic and put it into a med cup here and I'm going to add a little body and I did not draw this out so I'm kind of just winging it. Uh, it's going to be kind of a small elegant looking butterfly body going to be sort of long. Doesn't have to be perfect. Butterfly bodies are kind of wiggly, so don't worry about it being perfect. Uh, I'm going to add some antennas. I'm using a small brush for this. kind of a fairy looking body I think um, and then I'm going to go back to my flat brush that I was using before I'm going to dry that off and just for some depth and texture I'm going to add a little bit of this black just a tiny little bit on the brush in fact I don't want to get too much and then just add some swishes of black kind of coming out from the body uh, just add some nice depth. You don't want to put too much. Uh, but it really looks like it's going into the body now. Uh, it can touch it or it doesn't have to. It doesn't matter. Because this is not like nature. Um, and we're going to let that dry for just a couple minutes. And we're going to add some fairy dust. I think the body's dry. The rest of it is still drying. But um, I don't think it matters. I think we can add our fairy dust. Um, and you can do this project again just as well with acrylic paints. You don't need to use these kind of funky finger paints. I'm doing that actually just to show you. You can be creative with just about any kind of materials. Now, the one thing you do, do need to do, whether you're using um, acrylics or finger paint or whatever, for this next technique, you need to water down your paint uh, pretty well. So, and you might want to test this out on a separate piece of paper before you do it. Uh, but I'm just going to start to add some of my little, what I call fairy dust here. Um, and basically, you just take your thin brush um, and dip it into your paint and tap it. And it starts to add these fun little, very free dots. And just go over the whole painting with it. Don't worry about some of them are bigger than others. You can't really control this. Um, and that's kind of the fun of it. And then I'm going to switch colors. And again, really water down my paint. I'm going to add some yellow. But you got to add a lot of water. 
especially this paint's pretty thick. The acrylics might not be quite as thick as this, but uh, you can always test it out on another piece of paper first. Ah! There we go. Cool. You never know what you're gonna get. It's exciting. All right, and now I'm gonna add some red. I'm gonna do the same thing. Water down my red. Really need to add a lot of water. You get the, it's a very kind of creamy, watery consistency that you're looking for. And just, wow, yeah, start to add your, your red. Cool. And there we go. You can add as much as you want. It doesn't matter, but I think I'm just about done here. So that's today's project. And here's the final results. It does look like Tinkerbell, don't you think? I hope you'll check out my next one. Uh, it's creating stained glass butterflies. It's just as easy as this one, but completely different and just as much fun. So we'll see you soon.